I've got some massive news, some huge news, excuse the way I look, this has to do with my massive news. Um, Josh and I have just gone to the eye doctor and I just got another consultation and we got approved, well I got approved again for LASIK. So this LASIK dream that I've had ever since I first heard about it and um, what I was trying to get and what I have been trying to get my whole adult life is finally going to come true in one week's time. I am signed up and scheduled for surgery and I'm like, I'm so shocked. I just kind of feel like numb, like, uh, -uh. <laughs> what? Because it's something that I've wanted for so long and I've always just like, God, imagine having perfect eyes. I'll never have perfect eyesight. I'll never be able to see. And I never ever thought I would be able to see or that would ever happen. I don't even know, I, I wouldn't even know what it's like to be able to see clearly on my own. Um, and I, uh, I just, I'm like, wow, whoa. Uh, because last time I couldn't get it because uh, um, I needed my diabetes blood test um, and we didn't have a doctor yet so it took us a while to get a doctor to get all the blood tests ready and I just on a whim called in and they booked me in for my consultation because I'd redo all the tests again and everything worked out my bloods were fine and I'm booked in for surgery and um, I'm super stoked Josh Josh got anything to say I'm super stoked too. Josh is super happy for me. Uh, my they dilated my eyes so I can't see, and that's why um, I've got these these uh, super <laughs> spiffy shades on, <laughs> which are actually really dark. It's pretty cool. It should take about 12 minutes, and he said I'll be able to get up and I'll be able to see straight away. And uh, they are so so nice. They're like. They're unbelievably nice. There are people that have given them bad reviews. I don't know why. I think it's mostly user error type. Um, people that don't know how to read or follow directions, things like that. Um, and I'm sure some people have bad experiences because everybody's different. Um, we went to the, uh, what are they called? The, what's the place called? The laser, sorry. The LASIK, oh, the LASIK. La the LASIK Vision Institute is where we went and um yeah they are they they have always been friendly though they remembered me they remembered us even though it's been a year since we've been there and I look completely different they uh they remembered us right away and they were just they're just so 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 nice there and very helpful like they didn't contrary to what other people have said they didn't try to upsell anything or to talk it up or convince they just told us what it was, how it was, they're, they're excited for me, and they just, they're really friendly, and really informative, and I've got nothing but good stuff to say about them, and um, I guess that's it for now, until the day of surgery, and then, or the day before, I might make a video, like, oh my god, even tomorrow, and, uh, yeah, and then, I, I'm like, I just, can't even imagine what it would be like to be able to see like everybody else because my eyes are really bad. I think, what did she say? My prescription, my negative eyes are like six. negative six with really, really high astigmatism. So I can't see anything. And um, even with my glasses lately, I can't see because I messed them up because I thought I was going to lace the glass time. So they're crooked and I, I have to hold them up here to be able to see so they don't sit right on my face. And I, I don't know. And wouldn't you know it, I just spent all this money on contact lenses that are going to be no good because those are prescription. <laughs> um, but that's fine. It's worth the money thrown away to not, not need prescription. Then I can get, if I want to wear contacts, for color, I can get the cheap. Because yeah. when you get color contacts with no prescription, they're very cheap. And that would be fucking awesome because there's so many color contacts that I want out there, but they don't come in prescription. And... It's like a whole other world that's going to open up for me that I'll get to experience now. I mean, 
it sucks that I had to be in my 40s, but better late than never. Right. At least at some point before I die, I'll be able to see clearly. And if they mess up, though. Yeah, over. and it's like a lifetime uh, warranty. So if they do anything, my eyes revert, or I need a little bit of a touch-up or whatever, he said it doesn't matter if it's 10 years down the line, I can go in and get it fixed for free. Never have to pay anything, and so that's really, really good. Sorry. Yeah, um, they just, they're just so, so helpful, and I couldn't thank them enough for, for doing everything they could to push this through so that I could get the surgery, and um, it's just amazing. <laughs> excited to oh but it is early early Saturday morning and we are on the way all the way back to Greenville so that I could have my surgery um, it's uh, three days after the cycle nine show just to give you a time thing if it was like the day after I would have been like let's just stay here <laughs> let me get my surgery while we're here but um we're headed all the way back. It's early in the morning. I've got no makeup on. I'm not allowed to have anything on. So this is my naked face. And uh, my eyebrows are tattooed. I was going to put a little bit of makeup on my eyebrows because I feel really self-conscious. But um, I don't want the doctor to be like, you have stuff on your... Because they said eyebrows were okay. Just nothing on your actual eye. But this doctor is a pretty hard ass. So I don't know if he'd think that my eyebrows would like makeup would fall into my eyes or I didn't want to risk anything so I just went completely bare bare face so now here you can see exactly how Asian I actually am and how I think my skin is pretty good for 43 certain people say that I look really saggy and old but I think I look pretty damn good for my age but I just don't like having the little Asian eyes and so that's why I like you know panda eye shit you know Ooh. Bumpy. <laughs> Bumpy. Bumpy. Josh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, no wigs, no perfume, no makeup, and they suggested that you wear a onesie or pajamas so that you're comfy because the operating room is cold, and um, I'm going to flip it around and show you my slippers when I get out of the car. Yeah, they said, I said, do you have, um, is it okay if I wear like a onesie? And they said, well, we actually recommend, we suggest it if you have them, and uh, slippers. And if they've got bunny ears or they look cool, that much the better. And I said, oh, I know what I'm going to wear. I've got, I thought it was going to be my monster feet one. I forgot I've got zombie slippers, so I put on my zombie slippers. I'm covered in cat hair. So uh, I've tried to wipe it down, but, you know, when you live with cats, especially a, a fluffy white cat, there's no getting rid of cat hair, so they're just going to have to deal with it. But, um... I got my medication with me, I've got my eye drops, I've got, they gave me um, three sedatives. I haven't taken one yet. Uh, they said don't take it the day before surgery or take it um, after or right before surgery. But hopefully I can take it. I don't need it because I don't feel nervous. I'm not real nervous when it comes to my eyes. Um, my eyes are not sensitive or anything like that. But um, they make you drowsy and so hopefully it'll help me sleep because they recommend sleeping after surgery so that that flap can just be sealed and closed and start to heal so get like three four hours of sleep or something like that and um, that'll be good I woke up at uh, about three o'clock this morning so hopefully I will definitely be tired enough after the surgery um, Josh is gonna stop and get a coffee or energy drink or something I'm just gonna get an OJ I can't have caffeine before the surgery, but I will have um, a coffee afterwards. Love you. Love you. Uh, they have pulp. That's fine. Love you. <laughs> um. So yeah, uh, I am excited. I I still don't feel like it's real. I keep waiting for it to hit me. And waiting and waiting and like when is it gonna hit me that I'm gonna be able to see but I've been so used to just bitching about not being able to see and just thinking that this is gonna be the rest of my life that I I still can't come to terms with the fact that I'm gonna come home this afternoon and I'm gonna be able to see without glasses on like I just it just doesn't feel real it's I don't know of all the things I've ever had done surgery wise or 
life change wise, um, it doesn't really feel real. Like moving over here didn't feel real either. Going to the Cyclone 9 show didn't feel real until I was actually in there. So I think things are just hitting me a lot later um, nowadays. I just, just so much has happened to me that I never ever thought was going to happen that I've kind of like, I don't know, I've got this weird attitude about it. Not really attitude, but my reactions to things are a lot different now than they used to be. And, um, you know, where we've moved to, we've got this awesome neighbor that comes over and she is so cool. She loves kitty cats and she loves babies and she loves the gothic style and things like that. And so, you know, it's someone that we can count on if we need, you know, to do something like this, which is really cool. And, you know, I, I bake for her sometimes and she, it's just, it's just a really great environment. And, um, thank you. I like this brand. Um, mango pineapple orange um, mix. I just like corn juice. Uh, Although I just brushed my teeth, so it's gonna taste horrible. I didn't think about that ahead of time. Um, but yeah, so this doctor is, like I said a couple of minutes ago, he is a hard ass, and he does not allow recording inside. The other doctor that uses the older, um, the older laser, he he lets people in to film. But this one, it's a brand new laser. They had it installed, uh, like, what did they say, four days or the day before or two days before? So it was less than a week before I went in for my consultation. And um, it's a brand new laser, and this doctor is just very, very strict about his operating room, and he won't let anybody else in there but um, he won't be able to be in there and film like when it happens or anything. That does suck. Because uh, I'd really counted on that because they said that other people do it, but I guess the other people must have had the, the nicer doctor. <laughs> huh? The old school laser? Yeah. So this is a bladeless laser because uh, before it was um, a blade that sliced across and sliced the top of your eye your eyeball <laughs> but this one it doesn't it just it's bladeless and they said it's really really good it's brand new and I'm really excited to be able to get it and uh, I will be giving periodic updates on how my eyes are doing and what life is like being able to see so probably expect a few more videos on that here and there it won't be a lot because I might not have a lot to report I, I heard that your eyes could take a while for you to be able to see clearly. I heard that sometimes it's instant, it just all depends. But my eyes are so bad that um, I just wonder what it would be like for my level of astigmatism and horrible, horrible eyesight to just be able to go under there and less than 12 minutes later, just boom, boom, and then it's done. Um, but yeah, that's all. And I'm gonna just let my phone charge because uh, for some reason it didn't charge. And I get paranoid about it being less than 100%. 99. <laughs> 99. Like, what? It's 98. Oh, shit. Where's the charger? Um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to charge it up and then drink some OJ and prep myself for the day. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to be doing LASIK on both eyes, what we call wavefront optimized, but also using the laser flat maker. Does that sound right? Yeah. That will be a little easier on you. All of that nearsightedness and any astigmatism that you have, which you have quite a bit. Yeah. We're in the 15 second range as far as how long the laser takes. Wow. The whole procedure is maybe two minutes. Oh, really? Um, well, actually, um, per eye. Yeah. So if you, you'll be in there about 10 minutes. Yep. So do you have any specific questions about the surgery? Um, 
Do I have to go to sleep afterwards? Uh, they suggested that I did to help with flaps, but do I have to sleep? You don't have to sleep, but it's best to keep your eyes closed. Okay. For so how long? Two to three hours, you'll know. Okay. Um, the thing is, you, your eyes about your eyes are numb when we're doing the surgery, so yeah. immediately after you're not feeling anything, but about 10 to 20 minutes later, you start feeling a stinging, burning sensation. Oh, okay. So you're gonna to wanna to keep your eyes closed. Okay. And really what it is is the, the flap edge, right around the flap edge, Yeah. that has to heal. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a gutter. Now, not so much with the laser flaps as with the mechanical flaps, because the, the laser flap stays dry. Yeah. It, it, we don't have to get a lot of fluid, but your, your cornea does swell up a little bit. And so that first three hours, you can have stinging and burning. You don't want to rub your eyes because yeah. you can move the flap. And so that's why we say it's best. If you can go to sleep, go to sleep. You won't feel anything. Okay. But if not, just you know maybe put some headphones on or just try to keep them closed. You can, you can sit and talk. Yeah. You just don't keep your eyes closed. Okay. Keep them closed as much as you can. Um, and as far as the surgery, the... Um, even though the, the laser um, just scans across to make the flap, yeah. you, we still have to hold on to your eye to keep it from moving. Okay. So there's a kind of dual process there. There's a little fixation device that we set down on the white of your eye. We've got your eyelid held open so you can't blink. Once that's holding it, then there's a, a, a coupling device with the laser. It's just basically like the laser docks into that fixation device. Yeah. Once it's um, in there and the um, stable, you can't move your eye at all. You're still <laughs> seeing the light. Yeah. So there's a, a ring of lights up there and they just kind of look fuzzy. I will say when the, we're ready to hit the pedal and have the laser scan, I'll say don't move a muscle. Okay. Because you don't even want to kick your foot or anything. Because yeah. if you move, the laser can skip. Okay. So and you uh, moisten the eye? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Eye stays, we put more numbing drops in right before we start. And then as soon as we're done, that device comes off and we let you close your eye again. Okay. And then we go to the other eye and make the flap there. So that's under the femtosecond laser. And it takes about 20 seconds per eye to do the flap. And we swing you over. You don't have to get up, the bed will swing over. Um, we've got one eye covered up while we're doing the um, vision correction as part of the surgery. I'll put another little drape on your upper eyelid so the lashes are out of the way. And then we put the little eyelid opening device in again, just wide enough so that that flap is exposed. Okay. And then um, a little tugging sensation as of lifting the flap. But uh, you doesn't hurt, it's just like your eyes being moved and you can't help it. And you're looking at a green blinking light. And once we get you centered, the lights right on, um, centered on your pupil, a tracker will lock on. Mm -hmm. And once the tracker's locked on, we can engage the laser and then we don't have to hold your eye here. Your eye can wiggle or move, and the laser, laser will stay right in the center. Okay. And like I said, that's when it's going to be about 16, 18 seconds of laser time. You just hear a buzzing. You don't feel anything or see anything different, actually. Once the buzzing's over with, I'm rinsing off with um, sterile artificial tears and floating the flap back in place. Uh, flat because it has a hinge on top. Yeah. It's going to go right back where it was, just like a lid closing. I just have to make sure it's sticking before I let you close your eye. Okay. And we're done. We'll put your first set of drops in, prescription drops. We have them back there. Not yours, but we have some. Okay. And then we'll put little tear drainage stuff plugs in um, right at the end of the surgery so that what that does is restricts drainage so more tears will stay on your eye. Okay. And then they um, dissolve over three months. What, is, what does that feel like? You just feel a little tugging as it's going in, but once they're in there, you don't notice them. Okay. And it, um, you'll still use plenty of artificial tears in the first few weeks after, because you, your eyes do feel kind of yeah. dry and scratchy, but it really helps to limit the amount of dry eye symptoms that you have. Okay. Okay, other questions? No. All right, <laughs> so we're gonna get you back in the waiting area. Okay, I got my surgery. It was, it, yeah. I got a little scared when I was actually in there. I did, it was, it was a bit nervous. Yeah, I was shaking. They asked me, um, this, this guy said, well, with all the tattoos you have, this won't be anything, this won't hurt at all. 
and there's a girl over on the side and she said, aren't you a tattoo artist? <laughs> so it was pretty cool. Um, so we're talking about tattoos and things like that. And then, um, the doctor came in and he put me under, um, one laser and, uh, they hold your eye open. They, they got this thing and they hold your eye open and they put something next to your eye and next to your, your actual eyeball to stop it from moving. And I could feel them like, it's like they do that. Then they get close. The scariest part to me was when they lower that laser ring right down on top of your eye and you're seeing it get closer. You're like, Oh shit, that thing is really fucking close. And you just automatically want to back off from it. Cause you've got one eye with a shield on it. The other eyes open and you're seeing this you see this thing coming really really close and you just your natural instinct is to pull away from it but you can't and um and it's freezing cold in there and i'm shaking and shaking and shaking trying not to you know move because you, you shouldn't move cause, move because the laser will skip so you're there and then um it's like they put this thing they clamp it down you can feel it clamp on top of your actual eyeball like this pressure pushing down on your eyeball and I guess that's when they're cutting the um the top of your your eye off and um then they do the other eye after they do the first one you're kind of like can you just uh do the laser on this one so you can put my flat back <laughs> you know but they do the other one and then they the bed moves like a V so it moves from one end of the V and then it just moves to the other one you know the whole thing's set up like a V and um under the second one, you get a chance to blink and all that stuff. And under the second one, you uh, you look up at this light. There's two red lights on each side and a green blinking light in the middle. And the laser goes and it smells like burning. You can smell something burning. I was like, uh, so my eyeball burning, which it probably was. And uh, yeah, that's kind of intimidating. And then it, you just watch it. And it's like, zzz, you can feel it blinking. And it's like, you can smell it and the laser starts coming into focus and you're like, oh my God, you can, you can actually physically see it fixing your eyes because you can see, you can start seeing as the laser's in your eye, which is amazing. Then they do the other eye, then you sit up. It, it was a bit disappointing because they said that, I, oh, you'll be able to sit up and instantly be able to see, but that's not true. Um, yeah, it's different for everybody, but you know, my eyes are numb and everything's blurry, but it's not blurry like I need glasses blurry. It's really hard to explain. Um, I can see, but I can't see. I guess it's how they described it as good. I can see like it's underwater. So they suggest you have to go home and either go to sleep or just sit there with your eyes closed for like four hours to help that flap adhere. My eyes are closed now. Um, to help that flap adhere and start closing and um, it should start to clear up but when I have moments of clearness I can see that I can see which is amazing like I don't have glasses on right now and I can I can mostly make out Josh if I open my eyes and um, you know I've got these drops to put in and everything and they give you drops they give give you these glasses and I have to actually come all the way back tomorrow to check and then in a week. So um, they do keep checking up on you and stuff, make sure everything's going where it's supposed to go. And um, yeah, I'll be safe to open my eyes fully in about four hours. They, they say that you'll know because the numbing drops will wear off and you'll feel like itching and burning and you'll want your eyes closed. So I can imagine that. But uh, it was an experience for sure. It just feels so surreal, like surreal and crazy. And Josh has been so loving and supporting, supportive this entire time. Um, just really, really, really happy for me, which is awesome. And um, this has just been so cool. And I can't wait till my vision clears up and I can see, like for a moment there, I was able to see the car in front and I don't have glasses on and I can, I can see. So that's, I know I'm going to be freaking out as time goes by and I can see stuff and I don't have to wear these glasses anymore. I'm going to just be like, oh my God, I'm sitting at home. I'm waking up. I can see, I can walk around, I can see, and I'm going to be freaking the hell out because it's something that's a whole new world for me. And, uh, I'll just check back in 
when uh, I could open my eyes again in like four hours or something. I had recorded this video already, but it wasn't working for some reason, so I'm trying it again. Um, I woke up after my second nap, and uh, my eyes feel a lot better. Maybe it's all the Tylenol I've been taking, I'm not really sure, but I can completely see why they make you take, or they ask you to take sedatives, because you start to really panic and freak out, and it hurts. It hurts so bad. I've never heard anybody else talking about pain like this before, like I've had, so I don't know if it's just me, just the way that my eyes are, or if they are all smarter than me and they've taken med medication, but I'll find out tomorrow when I have to go back for my checkup. Um, I took my eye drops and I can feel the, the eye drops draining down my sinuses, you know how, how that happens, you can just taste it. Um, so to recap, uh, I got the surgery. I didn't really feel much. I felt pressure when they placed the thing on my eye. Um, no pain, of course. Everything was just fine. I could smell the laser burning when it turned on. Um, and uh, it was over, I think it was uh, 12 seconds per eye or something like that, which is really good. Uh, I have to wear a shield over my eyes um, to protect them when I sleep so I don't rub my eyes. Um, I went outside and uh, I was able to open my eyes for a minute um, and I could see that I could see but it was really blurry and then it was just instant pain and on the way home because it's, it was it's a long drive home so that was really 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 hard on me and um, I had put on the eye shields and the sunglasses they gave you and I had a hood and I put the hood over my face and I covered my face with my hands and I was still light sensitive. It still hurt so, so bad and I was I was almost crying with it. Josh thought I was crying because my nose was running and I, I had to like open my eyes for a second every, every few minutes and just let the tears pour out because they're all getting trapped under my eyelids. My eyes are watering really, really bad. Once that pain starts, the pain is, it's, it's bad. It's one of the top um, pains that I've ever had in my entire life. So let's just say that. Like childbirth was one. Um, getting the back of my thigh tattooed was another one. Uh, I, I can't really think of many times that I've been in pain, pain. My ectopic pregnancy was another one. It ranks right up there with those, uh, like someone just ripped your eye open and poured glass and dirt in there and you can't rub it, you can't get away from it, your eyes feel dry but they're not because they're pouring out liquid so usually when your eyes are sore and hurting the first thing you do is put eye drops in but that won't help and you can't even open your eyes to put eye drops in. So I had to have my eyes closed by the time we got home, he led me inside the house, put me in bed, I couldn't open my eyes for any of that. and. Um, Tylenol PM knocked me out, woke up, my eyes was, were still hurting, put my drops in, went back to sleep, woke up, and now that's how I am now. So how I see now is um, I feel like I've got contact lenses on. I can see. It's not crisp. Uh, through my youth, before I found out about Torg lenses, I always had a habit of wearing contact lenses that were... A little bit higher than my prescription to make up for the fact that they weren't for my toric and um, so I could see I could make everything out I just couldn't read anything that's how I feel like my eyes feel dry and a bit fuzzy as if I'm wearing contacts and it's to the point where I've had the contacts on maybe slept in them accidentally like back when I used to drink a lot I get drunk and sleep in my contacts wake up the next morning and have to peel them off of my eyes I'm sure some of you have done that before, had your contacts on too long and had to like peel them off your eyes. That's kind of what it feels like. Like I've got dried out old contacts on and they're letting me see, but they need to be taken off and let my eyes breathe. It feels like that. So it's really surreal to think that I don't have contacts on and in, I mean, I, I was in that room maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes maybe. I mean, it was it was eight seconds to form the flap um, on top of my eye with a laser and then like 20 seconds per eye to actually fix it. So it's, it's so surreal to think that they could give you 
good eyesight in a matter of minutes. They could undo 35 years of not being able to see in just seconds. And it's not as easy breezy as everybody leads you to believe. I mean, it is, but it isn't. It's not like you get the LASIK and you sit up and it's like, oh, I can see everything because you can't. It's now I know why nobody came out of the room like, oh my God, I can see, I can see. Cause it's, it's not like that. You come out and everything is hazy. Like you're looking under smoky water and your eyes have to change and adjust and get used to it. But you can tell that you can see, like I'm about to shower. Well, I'm going to take a bath so the water doesn't run into my eyes, but I'm about to take a bath and I will be able to see my own body for the first time in since I was eight years old, you know, without needing glasses. I, I never wore contacts in the shower, so I've always, you know, showered blind. Just had to, if I was shaving my legs or something, I had to do everything by, by touch because I can't see anything. So, like, little things like that. I go to sleep. I, I looked over when I woke up, and I could see into my drawer next to me without having to put glasses on. And it, I, I'm so scared to, like, throw my glasses away because I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to need these. I, I still can't wrap my head around the fact that I, I'm never going to need glasses again. And one day this is going to be normal for me where I'm going to walk around and just be like, I can see. I don't need glasses and I don't need contacts and I can I can see like everybody else. And like, like the doctor said, I'll end up with 20-20 vision when my eyes adjust. And I, I can't even conceive of that. Like, I'm still like, wow. Um, but right now I'm just waiting for my eyes to kind of heal. Um, my eyes are like really dopey. <laughs> um, my eyes usually, I'm real sensitive about my eyes that they don't match up, you know, like this, no, nobody's face is symmetrical, but um, this eyelid droops a lot more than this one does. And my eyes usually kind of crossed, like, I guess this is like my lazy eye because my eyes have always been so weak this is what I was told when I've been to the doctor before. Um, my my eyes, my eye muscles were really weak because I can't focus on anything. And so my eye over the years has just kind of started drifting off and doing whatever it wants to do. Um, it's not highly noticeable, but it is noticeable if you know what you're looking for, like I do. But uh, they were all so nice there. Like the girl that helped do my test, she actually ran outside after us to ask me how I was. And, oh my God, I'm so excited for you. Can you see? And you know, it's that um, individual attention that you get that just makes you feel really special and cared about and it's just, it's amazing and um, I will probably make another update tomorrow after I get back from my appointment and uh, my checkup appointment. It's like such a far drive to go and I have to go tomorrow and then I have to go next week but I'd rather they check and make sure everything's healing fine than I end up going blind. Um, which I actually, when I was on the table, I started having like a panic attack because I thought that I went blind in my left eye because um, they did this eye first. They they put a shield on this eye and then they, you know, put something here and here and then this way as well to keep your eye from moving at all. And you, you can't move your body, you can't do anything because the laser goes across and makes it flap. And if you move, the laser will skip. So I made damn sure I didn't move. And when they switched it and they did this eye, it's like when they lift that flap off, you can see your vision change and everything gets even blurrier if that's possible. It's like it goes into focus, it goes out of focus, and then the flap and everything is like gone. And um, I couldn't tell what they were doing. And I guess they they put a f um, the shield back on this eye because they were going to do the laser on this eye first. And um, I thought that I didn't feel them put the flap on over here. And I was like, oh my God. I can't see, oh my god, I just went blind in one eye, what the hell do I do, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this, and I was like, I need to get up, and I was going to tell them, can we just pause this, I, I need to walk around, I, I have to go to the bathroom, I just like, I, I started having a massive panic attack, but I just, whew, it's just give me a couple more seconds, they know what they're doing, just relax, they're looking at all the, they're monitoring everything, if something went wrong, they would have told me, oops, or something, or, and I was like, just stay, just stay, just stay, it'll be done in a minute, it'll be done in a minute, and my heart was racing, I felt like I was going to faint, my stomach was going, and I was like, shaking, and it was so scary, after I thought I was going blind, and then, um, they went, and they did the laser here, and I just stayed still as a board, I was like, oh my god, oh my god, Oh my god. And um and then when they took this off to do this one, 
I could see and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's just me. And uh, everything went fine like clockwork and it was great, but uh, it was it was terrifying for a couple seconds there because, you know, it's your eyes and if something went wrong and they, they screwed up your eyes, what are you going to do, you know? I mean, it's your eyes. <laughs> um, so I'm just glad everything worked out fine. I... I was not prepared for that level of pain though. They said itching, burning, watery eyes, a little bit of discomfort, that's it. But that's not at all what I felt. I felt, I just felt searing, searing pain and I'm going to ask them if that was normal or not. And um, yeah, so I'm, I need to go take my bath and probably take some more medicine so that we can get up early and make it out there early in the morning again. And. Uh, yeah, check back in after that. Okay, so I went to my appointment, and he said everything's fine. Everybody that went in um, yesterday to get their their surgery has complained about pain today, apparently. And I think it's because with that laser, the, the laser's different, and um, it's the laser pain that they were all talking about. But, um... He said that I had the highest prescription of the entire day, so I was the one who needed the most correction. Um, up close, my vision is 2020, so I can I can hold something about like down in my lap, and I could read the bottom line, which is awesome because I've never been able to do that. Usually, I have to have it right here, and then still squint to be able to see it. No lie, like almost touching my nose, my eyesight was that bad. And now I could see, and in moments of clarity, like when I first put my eye drops on, you know, it washes over and protects my eye, and I can, for moments, see everything. Other than that, I can see certain things that are, you know, in front of me, and I can read stuff, and it's just, I'm still over the moon about it. He said that this eye, when they cut it, I, I had bleeding around the cornea, so he had a disinfected, and, but this eye was the one that was hurting me more. But my flaps are down and they're in the right place and everything looks good. I got to go back in another week. And uh, he said my vision will still be fluctuating quite a bit. But after um, after week, they're going to see, then they'll vision test me and see uh, how close to 2020 I am. And um, as my vision heals, we'll see how much closer I am to, because I'm supposed to be 2020 which is just unbelievable. I can't wait to be able to go swimming, go to carnivals and you know, anything that normally I have to worry about when it rains, if I open the oven, you know, my glasses won't fog up. Sometimes even going from the car to outside, my glasses would fog up and I don't have to worry about that anymore, which is, it's just great. I, I mean, I've had this dream ever since I found out what LASIK was. I must have been about 19 years old, maybe 20 tops. So it's been a long time and I never ever thought this would happen to me. And um, I can't wait till I could walk around without these on and without um, needing eye drops and everything when my eyes just feel normal because that's when it'll really hit me. Because right now, feeling glasses on my face, it feels like I'm wearing glasses and without them, the the hurting eyes makes me feel like I have contacts on. So I can't wait to experience sight, but not feel like I'm wearing glasses or contacts. And I'm sure it'll come. I mean, this is on the second day, but it is great so far. The pain is gone. I've only got, you know, a little bit of stinging here and there when my eye dries out or my eyes dry out. I'm constantly putting eye drops in and, uh, yeah, uh, I'm just glad not to have to relive that pain. I thought I was going to have to go to the emergency room. It was horrible. But when all the sensitivity goes, I can wear makeup again. That'd be great. I've got these... Oh, no! <laughs> these tiny little Asian eyes right now. It looks so stupid when I have these off. You see my little eyes without anything on. and just I feel really disgusting. But, oh well. I, I'm glad I have these big old things. But yeah. There's Josh! <laughs> so I got back from my um, two-week appointment. I have one more appointment that's uh, my one-month appointment and after that one I will probably go ahead and upload these videos. I made a video in the car but I'm not sure because it's dark outside I'm not sure how well it'll show up but um, 
my eyes are still fluctuating they're still fuzzy uh, it turns out that because my prescription was so high it's going to take a while before my vision clears up so it comes and it goes it's blurry it's clear it's blurry it's clear it turns out sorry not it turns out in the end my vision should be straight at least 2020 right now when my eyes match up because i i got my eye exam and stuff when my eyes match up my vision is actually already 2020 uh, two weeks in so that's really really cool um the only bad thing about um being able to see is that it turns out i can see how crappy my makeup actually is i'm not used to being able to see while i'm doing my makeup and now um all this looks like too much i don't really like it it's going to be hard for me to figure out what i do like because i don't like the the little asian eyes but i don't want to be complete panda eyed anymore either well that was cool and uh i've got to find a way to try to do my makeup better now that i can see what i'm doing i don't have glasses over and with the contacts i would wear i couldn't really see clearly with the contacts either so learning or relearning how to do my makeup to suit my face with my natural eye color and um no contacts and all that stuff is going to be a little bit of a challenge i will be able to wear color contacts after about six months or so so i'm gonna of course jump into that for my photos or videos but day to day i'm, I'm not going to bother with it of course um yeah, but aside from that, it was pretty cool hearing that I've got 2020 vision already when my vision is clear. I just can't wait for it to be clear all the time because it just, it feels like I've got contacts on. That That's the only thing that I, I can really compare it to. It always feels like I have contact lenses in that I have got to remove. I, I want to come home and take my contacts off, put my glasses on so I could see, but I don't need either one. And if I were to put them on, I wouldn't be able to see anything. My eyes feel dry, but he checked my eyes and I don't have dry eye. I don't have anything wrong. My flaps are healing. Everything's fine. So it's working out pretty good. I, I'm i still getting used to being able to see myself in the shower or when I wake up. Um, I sleep with blindfolds on to protect my eyes. When I take them off, I'm reaching for my glasses and there's no glasses there. And it's just when I can see clearly, everything is so crystal, crystal clear. And it's the most amazing thing because seeing life through a lens, whether it's a glasses lens or a contact lens, is completely different from seeing the world, you and the world, and everything is so much bigger and more vibrant and beautiful. And every day is just another wow, wow, you know, situation for me. So I still don't regret it. I'm just eager for my vision to stabilize. That's going to be so cool, but for now it's already cool. And I will check back in in another two weeks at my one month appointment. Just a last update on my eyes. Um, I was not able to go to my last one month appointment because uh, we had uh, another appointment for other stuff. And the the first reschedule was because there was actually no doctors available because it was um, Thanksgiving. But my eyes are still blurry. It's still hard to see. It's hard to focus. It's kind of annoying because it's like I need, it, it feels like I need contacts or glasses and I just don't have access to them. It's like when you have really bad eyesight or, or kind of, not really bad, kind of bad eyesight, you would usually rely on glasses or contacts. So I feel like that, but I've got nothing that I can use to help my eyes. So um, I get kind of headaches. Uh, I don't see starbursts or halos or anything like that, but my eyes are really tired all the time. I got like, I have like bags under my eyes now, and um, it's like a struggle to see. Sometimes my eyes are clear, sometimes they're not. Most of the time they're not. I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting for them to stabilize, and at this point it kind of feels like they're never going to stabilize. I would still I would still definitely get it done because nothing beats being able to wake up in the middle of the night and see or see when I'm in the shower and things like that like even though I can't read and things get blurry especially after a full day of shopping or whatnot um, 
I'll go to the store and I can't see, I, I can't make out what anything says. Um, for the most part, it's still wonderful. And once my vision stabilizes, it will be the very, very best. And um, I have also noticed that when I wake up, when I grab my phone or, or whatever, like I do to, you know, turn off my alarm or to check stuff, I've noticed that um, I can't read if it's dim or dark. Like before I used to be able to read um, when things were dim. Now I actually have to turn the brightness up where I can't make out anything. My eyes are not as dry as they used to be. Um, I mean, they're getting better, I think. Every day is different. The other day it was probably as blurry or as bad as when I first got them done, which sucked. Some days are better than others, but man, what a trip. It, it is still crazy sometimes. I go to sleep and I reach for glasses that aren't there to take off or I reach for glasses that aren't there to put on. So it's, it's definitely different and I am still super, super stoked because even bad eyesight is better than what what I had before, which is like the worst of the worst almost.